This lecture, we build upon the idea that you have business units, businesses, and in a strategic portfolio or a portfolio of a diversified company that have some resource fits or have some fits across there, across the value chain, and how these business units might be able to work together. Let's look at the resource aspect of that. Resources meaning financial resources and other kinds of resources, capabilities, assets, and the like that organizations might be able to use as they're thinking about maximizing their portfolio. For example, oftentimes you have an internal situation where some business units are generating cash, other business units are consuming cash. Uh, a business unit that needs a lot of cash, maybe it's in an unattractive market, it's in a weak position, you're trying to improve its position, but you're in an unattractive market, it's consuming a lot of cash, it's called a cash hog. Um, sometimes you might want to think about selling that off. We'll talk about that later, diversifying or pr pruning your portfolio, if you will. But you might just want to improve its position. It might be in an attractive market, but performing badly, still consuming cash. But you have some companies that are doing extremely well in attractive markets, and they have very strong market positions. They're cash cows. They throw off cash. You have cash coming from them, and maybe you channel it to hogs. Stars are businesses that are self-supporting. They're, they're companies that you would love to own. You don't have to do much. They are strong in their position, and they're throwing off uh, enough cash to support themselves. They're neither a hog nor a, a um, cash cow. They might be a cash cow. In fact, one of the things that you try to do is you try to take a cash hog that's consuming a lot of resources, turning it into a, a star, which is one that's self-sustaining, and then eventually by perhaps having some cross-unit uh, synergy, um, across the value chain, you can lower the cost structure, improve the revenue, and turn it into a cash cow. Then you have it generating cash, and then you can move on to your next investment going forward. This is called an internal capital market. Having a strong internal capital market allows companies to really uh, be in a position to take advantage of new market opportunities when they come up without having to access the public markets, which can tend to be expensive. Um, you have to make sure there's disciplined procedures and processes for accessing this capital market as organizations uh, use their own internal capital to expand. Other types, types of resources might be certain types of skills or capabilities that you want to develop in order to be successful across your whole portfolio. For example, you might find out as, uh, for example, technology changes and you have more and more um, internet uh, ordering and processing that you might want to build up your technology skills, not only for one business unit, but because you see that having that capability will help the retail side of several different businesses who are all perhaps in different industries. But bringing that technology up to a higher level might help improve all of your businesses. Your logistics capabilities is another possibility. Your leadership capabilities, the ability to manage and lead might be another. Sometimes the firm's resources in a certain area might be stretched too tightly. You can invest in a sort of centralized operation. It can be a SWAT team and go out and help the other business units in certain uh, support areas like finance or accounting or if there's an acquisition to be done. It's a specialized skill. A company, one of your businesses is going to buy a smaller business in its industry. You may have a centralized function that can go in there and support that role or support that acquisition in that business and then move on to the next business the next time. That way the organization, the business units, don't have to build that capability themselves, but at the same time they don't have to go outside to investment banks and, advi and expensive advisors, which tends to cost a lot of money and be expensive. So organizations that become corporate diversified firms tend to have these specialized skills that are used, that are developed in the corporate sense, but can be deployed to various elements of the organization. Those can also become overhead and be costly if they're not used effectively. So the management problem becomes one of effective use of those resources and capabilities going forward. The idea of the portfolio approach is to understand the financial fit among the businesses, how each of them can drive additional revenue in the others, how each of them can drive additional cost savings in the others, and what sorts of capabilities and resources one can invest on and get the biggest bang for the buck. You're not just investing in one business, you're investing in a whole portfolio, and you can see how that value will be distributed among the various businesses. That's the sort of thing that we do going forward from a corporate strategy perspective, understanding how you build up the portfolio and make it stronger. 
In the next lecture, we'll talk about ranking our various businesses so you can start to understand strategically where you put your energy corporately into business strategy, where you have to have, where you as a corporation with a whole portfolio of businesses, where you put your energy from an individual perspective into the business units, either resources, capital, uh, management resources going forward to make, uh, to make the individual choices that have to be made within the business units. That's what we'll talk about in the next lecture.